Hi friend, my, where does the time go? Each year for the past four years, I love for us to just take a break from being in the kitchen or the garden and just catch up as friends usually do and speak in a way that is just from the heart and usually means that I'll be grabbing a tissue or two. This chat is going to be very rambly and hard to follow and We'll touch on some heavier topics, so please know this is not my usual format. I share these more vulnerable topics because life is always gonna throw the ball at you on a curve, but you still gotta catch it and play ball. And even though I'm gonna talk about my situations, the reality that connects us is that you're either currently going through something, just coming out of a stage, or you're about to walk into something. And so with that, let's talk about some of the other things that have happened over this last year. When I sat here last year, it was my first time sharing publicly about our struggle to conceive, you know, outside of our close family and doctors. I never had to wrap words around that part of my life um, in an external, like vocalizing that story. And so in doing so, I, I couldn't have intended how, how much of a uh, release sharing that with you and the love and support and encouragement that I got back um, meant to me. Well, we are here a year later and um, there's still no baby, but I remain very hopeful. I'm going to talk more about this journey, but it will be in a way that will likely not add as much color as you would prefer to the picture. And honestly, that is because we are still currently um, in the midst of our journey since there is still no baby. And um, it gets very heavy um, at times, every month. There are times when I will kind of jokingly say that there is a Cassandra that I know will come out <laughs> two to three times a month. And I think sometimes it's me just being tired, right? Like the work week, you know, just sends you on a doozy and I'm just exhausted from the busyness of it all. But there's also, um, you know, like the, the monthly disappointment, which is it's hard. It's so hard. And I, I, I am bouncing back quicker than what I used to. Um, but I do want to continue to share because I am very, very optimistic about the future. But first I have to apologize to the dozens of people that have written me over this last year and I haven't been able to write you back. It's Yes, there's um, a volume in my inbox and I try to tackle as many um, emails per day as I can. But these specific emails that I want to reply to, what seems to happen? I replied initially to just a few, but then my hands would just rest on the keyboard and I, I just felt immobile. I. I can read those emails and feel very encouraged by them. But um, I, I just, I don't land in the best spot or I recognize that I could be spiraling towards sadness. And, you know, I can't lose my day or intent with this ever pervasive thing 
situation. And so I'm very sorry because I want to write you back and to share. I just, I have to read it and feel encouraged by it. But I just, I don't have words or energy. Is that the word? Um, to, to write back on a couple I have um, put a heart because it is a sincere thank you. And I don't, I'm not going to send like a generic response. I just needed for you to know that I still see these comments that come in on that previous video and they are very touching and encouraging. But also please know that this is, um, it's, it's very hard. Now there are many new faces here on the channel and so for those of you that are not aware, my husband and I have been married for over 10 years and for the last seven, we have been trying to start our family. Many of you wanted to know if we were open to adoption and the answer is yes, we absolutely are. But within the last couple of months, I've changed something that I have been resisting for a while because along this journey, your actions just seem to keep getting, you know, more and more bold. So let me explain. So I've always generalized my full-time job here on the channel, but now let me share that with you. I've been an assistant principal for the last eight years of my career. And before that, I was a curriculum specialist. And before that, I was an elementary school teacher. In fact, many, many moons ago before this channel, in 2012, I was on YouTube sharing about my third grade classroom. I had a blog and everything, and I would share about setting up my classroom and my bulletin boards and thrift store finds that I would find for my students. I was at a very small school, and I just wanted to connect with other teachers because I was the only third grade teacher at that school. And so I hopped online, but nothing really became a part of it. In fact, actually now it's a big thing like on YouTube to do that. And I think that the online teacher community is just awesome. Uh, but then a couple of years after that, I started to pursue Sue administration. I no longer had a classroom, so it just fizzled out. I share this to say that as an assistant principal, my work hours are no joke. And even when I get home in the evenings, there still are calls and work that easily bleed into the evening. If you want to know why I can't keep a posting schedule, I am certain it's because my work days are so sporadic. And since I don't have a set time off, I leave when the work is done and well not even done just settled enough now i love working in a school the mix of students and parents and teachers really fits my strengths and disposition nicely and as long as the lord gives us health and strength my professional work is what i will continue to do until i retire because it is how we are funding our farm dream between my husband working full-time and my own career I am so appreciative of how Becoming a Farm Girl has grown over the years, but I also haven't been leveraging it to replace my full-time job. And I like having those distinct buckets where I can move from professional work to passion project. I have poured myself into my professional work because I take pride in anything that has my name on it. And you know, it's like my dad says, anything worth doing is worth doing right. I've always had at least a part-time job since I was 16. I worked throughout high school and college. Even when I was a teacher and we worked 10 months, I would be at the school over the summer doing programs. And so I'm just, you know, I'm a worker and I love helping people and working towards a, a long-term um, project and you know just diving in and becoming saturated with something is really what I enjoy doing. Now I feel like every woman who has tried to conceive has likely been told by somebody that oh it happened when you're not thinking about it or you've got to reduce your stress and <laughs> yeah I've heard that plenty of times but these last four years <sighs> Administrative work really has been pulling a lot out of me. But let's not even make it about me because I am convinced that nearly all occupations have employees that are working on the margins because of a declining workforce and turnover. 
I've been an administrator at two schools. They were pre-K through eighth grade in a single building. Uh, the student enrollment was always at least 1,000 to 1,300 students uh, with two assistant principals inclusive of uh, the principal. And so typically the elementary school is larger than uh, the middle school. Uh, so I was the direct supervisor of staffs of over, you know, 40 teachers and paraprofessionals and 500-ish uh, students. So my days typically start at 5 a.m. when I wake up here in the house just dealing with sub coverage and other emergencies with the building um, before I actually then go in at 8 o'clock and oftentimes I'm not leaving the building until about 6 o'clock and the increased pressures of um, dwindling uh, budgets and increased demands and enrollment and hiring and all sortment of things um, has, it's a much more stressful environment in this last half of me being an administrator than it was, um, you know, when I started eight years ago. My family kept telling me that I needed to pull back, but I didn't want to listen because I'm not a quitter. And, you know, I worked really hard to to climb that ladder um, of finishing, you know, my bachelor's and my master's and a post-master's and level one and two, you know, certification. And, um, you know, it, it meant, it meant a lot to me. And one day, um, I, I very much saw myself having my, my own school. So the compromise that I made last year was that instead of, perhaps stepping down from uh, assistant principal, I would move to a different location. And that's what I did last year. Uh, I was still an assistant principal, but at a different school um, that was a bit closer. And I thought that that would be my workaround. But then last year that principal left and there was only myself and uh, the other AP at that school, again, with over a thousand students. And, um, Again, a lot of the the day-to-day -day situations that I have grown accustomed to being in administration um, were, were constant. And it came to a, a heady point, and this is where I'm being a little gray, y'all. It came to a heady point where, you know, I could try a variety of diets and supplements and um, appointments that we're trying. Um, but if there were still, if I was still exposing myself day in and day out to a very stressful um, environment, then essentially all of that would be for naught. The body keeps score and knows what stress is. And even though you can have a calm tone and demeanor and not give away perhaps physical signs that situations are stressful, it is still there in your heartbeat and blood pressure and um, quality of sleep. And uh, it manifests uh, in ways such as um, digestion and other things that were becoming clear signs that um, that it was it was becoming a lot. For the longest time, I thought that I could do both. Why wouldn't I be able to? But it is now at um, a point where I am willing to step down and make that trade off, so that the work that I am trying to do with my body can take hold. Um, the acupuncture that I am trying and just all of the different things, if my body needs to just not be in a state of um, agitation and constantly putting out kind of fires for 10, 11, 12 hours um, throughout the day, I, I need to, to get this vessel prepared in a way where that, that energy where she feels safe and supported to bring um, life into this world and, um, 
you know, I don't, there is still time. Yes, even though I am in my late 30s. But I don't, I want this. And my actions need to align with that. And again, we have been coming uh, just more and more aggressive with different things that we're doing. But I could no longer keep doing the procedures and paying for the this and the that when, again, if my um, stress is just at a place where it doesn't need to be right now, then that undergirds everything else. And so I have now transferred to um, a different school where I am an acting AP. And at the end of this year, uh, I will be transitioning into that school's literacy coach and I'll be moving from a year-round school schedule to um, being a 10-month employee so on the the teacher track uh, in terms of you know my, my working schedule and um, I cannot tell you because I am a couple of weeks now into this transition I you don't even know how um, the tolerance, because that's what it is, you've built up a tolerance for it. And you don't even realize that your capacity was so high or, or at the, that you had that level of capacity until you have had an opportunity to step away from that. And even the way that I realized that I was waking up um, during the work week because I no longer am waking up first thing, and my mind is immediately into activation mode of checking emails, of making this new plan, of, of all, all of the things that I, that front loaded um, uh, my morning. And I, there is a, a, a bandwidth that I have now that is, um, I am so, so excited. I'm so excited about. We are also simultaneously moving into the adoption process, but I will not be sharing that journey. Now for sure, it has been helpful to see others' journeys here on, on YouTube, um, but it is not a direction that I want to take my online sharing and for many other reasons. And so we would keep that, um, we would keep that failed. So yeah, there may be a video <laughs> that comes out um, and it's meet my son, meet my daughter, but it would not be a real time sharing or documentation of that. Uh, it would be more so uh, in retro aspect. Um, but as I shared, I, I have reason um, this year to retain the, the optimism that I have um, that I'm going to be a mama. I, I am. And my husband is going to be a papa. And, you know, my parents are going to be grandparents. It's just, uh, you know, <laughs> we're, 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 taking, we're, we're taking the fun ride <laughs> on our way to get there. I don't know. So there have definitely been days when the clouds hang low and I can hardly see the road. But... When I look around, all of my good days outweigh all of my bad days, and I won't complain. And even with the challenges of life, you can still have a beautiful story because, you know, the reality is, is that things are not going to always line up in this kind of um, picture perfect way that we think they're going to unfold. And so that is why still being appreciative for what you do have and spending your time and energy in a worthy cause or pursuit is so, so worth it because, you know, life is always in, in, in constant motion and movement and things aren't staying the same. And as I have mentioned before and will continue to mention because it's so integral to my perspective on things that, you know, I, I, as much as I am looking forward to our homestead one day, and I know that that will happen in the space and place and time that makes the most kind of sense. There's no urgency for it. I'm not going to wish that the time between now and then away because so many things will be different 
um, some better and likely some worse, right? Um, with the passage um, of time. And so each day continues to remain a gift for me. And I think being able, the real dance of life is being able to take the, the joys and the struggles and to be able to still maneuver through, um, through life. You can get through it, even on your toughest days. So let's talk a little bit more about last year, which was full of surprises that I could not have planned. And while it's always helpful to have goals in mind, these videos that I've done year after year are a testament to the fact that I make progress in some areas of my goals and then others I completely, either they fall off or I didn't get as far as I anticipated. And truly the point isn't that year after year I can say that I've checked the box because as you can kind of see with this, building sequence in the last four years that my direction is always progressing. And you know, progress isn't always linear. You know, friends, I can still say that this past year was awesome for four reasons. And the first was that my relationship with three particular women um, just went to a place of, oh, just special meaning. And that would be, my relationship with Miss Fanny, some of y'all may already know her from my previous videos, but my relationship with Miss Fanny, with my neighbor Monica, who's two doors down on the end townhouse, and Crystal. I also learned a lot about caring for birds, how to harvest meat, and I went on my first deer hunt. Let me tell you, the Cassandra last year listening to this would have been like, what? So some of y'all will get this if you're living and working in the city, but your heart is in the country like me. And so like very honestly, the only people that I can talk to very authentically with about uh, my, my passion for returning to homestead life is my family. So my mom, my dad, and my husband, my brother will listen to me, but like, he's not about it. Um, and so it's been them for, you know, forever. And, and that's like truly it. And aside from, again, these past four years, you. One of the things though, that I started um, to do, and perhaps it was a little bit uh, inevitable, especially during COVID, is to have more of these conversations with uh, my neighbors here in our townhouse cul-de-sac. And more intensely over the past two years, and I, I wonder if it has been because I am now externally processing how I feel and what I'm doing um, week after week. And for that, I say thank you for being a friend to me and listening in that way because the unintended consequence of that has been that I have been talking more to, um, and we've, we've always talked, like don't get me, don't, don't get it wrong about that, but now I am getting very specific with my homesteading passions. Like before I would say things or like Monica was like, oh, like what are you cooking this weekend? And I would kind of tell her, but I wasn't getting into like, oh, I'm canning this and you know, all of that kind of thing. But the past two years, I have, and I say it with such kind of like pride and excitement. And of course they're seeing my garden uh, out here kind of <laughs> growing year after year. Um, so that sparks conversation. But as a result of that, I've been able to connect with two of my neighbors in a way that has just, there's this uh, beautiful relationship that I wish I could just capture more. But I mean, those moments aren't always when I can kind of, um, grab a camera or it may not be, you know, appropriate in the moment, but um, particularly with my neighbor, Monica, who, as I told you, is becoming a farm girl and I have updates on that. And also with Miss Fanny. So she's in the next uh, quadrant of townhouses and she is the most vivacious 75 year old woman you will ever meet. And she grew up as a farm girl and she has just, encouraged my heart so much. Here's what is so exciting about Monica. So this summer, y'all, she is going to have her very own garden and she wants to start gardening in a green stock because, you know, as a beginner, she's like, hey, I don't know all the things, but I see the success that you're getting with your green stock. And you know what? Like, I think I could do that. It seems pretty simple. And I'm like, yes, it really is that simple. So 
Y'all, that's awesome. You know, that's so great. And, and earlier this year, she harvested quail with me. I mean, she just, there are so many other questions that she has. And, and, okay, I can't wait to share this with you because we said that we were gonna do this in March, but she wants to start getting into canning. Into canning, I, I just, I mean, it's, it's so awesome. And it's, she really came about this. And I can only say that I maybe have just played some little uh, part in this because she was already kind of on this path, but eventually it becomes important to connect with someone. And I am so happy to have her um, and to be able to kind of share, you know, what I've learned and to just to be a, a motivator for her. There is a little bit of a downside and I'll go ahead and share this with you now. I'm actually just finding this out about a week ago. Ugh, I have mixed feelings about this, but I had my suspensions because about three weeks ago, I noticed that they were getting their carpet replaced and I didn't say anything, but, but when you're in like a townhouse community, I mean, yes, some people will like stay here and kind of, you know, live here even after they retire and all of that. But it's kind of, you know, um, for most folks, you're gonna be in your townhouse for a number of years before you move to like, you know, your final destination kind of thing. And so I saw that, but um, that happening, but I didn't say anything, you know? Um, she was just telling me about, you know, the company that, that they were choosing to go with their carpet. They were really, you know, a great price for when, you know, we get our carpets replaced. But then she shared with me that they are expecting their third, which is exciting. It is so exciting. I am not the kind of person I love. I get so excited when other women share that they're expecting because at the end of the day, honey, I'm happy for you. I want my baby. <laughs> so like, that's great. And I knew that they were, you know, open to um, having a third. So that's awesome news. But it also means that they're gonna be looking for a bigger space because the uh, bedrooms here in the townhouses, there's three. And so she has, her youngest right now is just turning three. And then um, her oldest boy, yeah, he's in, yeah, he's about to go into third grade. And so there's just, I mean, you can definitely make it work and they will. Um, but yeah, they are starting to look for, for, you know, houses. Um, luckily they're not planning to move, you know, so far away that visiting will be out of the question. Um, but actually she was talking about maybe looking into Pennsylvania like Trey and I were, because again, she's like, Hey, I really think that we just want some land and we want to be out of, you know, neighborhoods and HOAs and all that other kind of stuff. But yeah, so, oh, it's just been so nice to have like, Monica two doors down, you know, like, yeah. So I will, I will miss her um, when they eventually find a place, but also just, I'm also incredibly excited for her. And I know that we're gonna stay in contact, but it's just, it's so simple and easy and fun to literally walk to her house, you know, in my slippers, Thor's always playing in our backyard, you know, that kind of thing. Um, yeah. And then there's been my relationship with Crystal that has just been fantastic. She has been a mentor and friend to me and, you know, guided me in a skill set that I wasn't sure how I was ever going to access outside of doing that alone. And that's just so, so powerful. And, um, oh, Y'all, like I, I am now a person that is very confident. I still have much more that I want to kind of learn and perfect and grow in, but I have the basics of being able to butcher and harvest my own meat. And I like that even was, that wasn't even a goal that I had mentioned last year because like, how was it gonna happen, right? Outside of, you know, books or something like that, or like an expensive seminar maybe. Um, but I just, I appreciate the fact that she is just several minutes up the road. And in addition to learning that skill set, um, she's also been an incredible friend. And I mean, she introduced me to, I now have a whole bird tribe. And so, oh, that's, that's been a win for this year. And even though my boys, when I told them that I was going hunting, were like, 
hold on, like in protective mode, but also kind of realizing, oh, okay, like we shouldn't be too shocked by this. Um, they have both shared with me that they actually also want to now pursue hunting. I know, right? I think you all, I think I captured that moment with my dad while he was here. But then originally my husband was like, oh, okay, hunting is maybe your thing, but you know, honey, I'm happy to eat, you know, all that other kind of stuff. Whatever you harvest and like bring it, of course. But then, and I'm going to have to see, I don't know whether I recorded that on my phone or my camera, but I, look, I intentionally kind of left out the Maryland hunting guide and I would catch him reading it. He would be reading it and then like, I would talk to my mentor like on the phone and we'd be talking about X, Y, and Z and different things. And then strategically, there were a couple of like shows that I would um, put on the TV and just kind of let play while I was in the kitchen. And then out of the blue, but not really, Trey was like, you know what? I think I want to start doing this too. I could totally see myself hunting. <laughs> so in case you were wondering like how my husband is fitting into uh, this homestead dream, I would, here's the best way for me to kind of um, put it. So, well, I guess I'm going to say it this way so that you, this is like the quick and dirty way of saying it, but me, like, but not exactly. So essentially, because of my husband's work schedule, right, where he is, and I am, am intentionally kind of vague about what that looks like because he is in the military in terms of his deployments and workups and all that other, all those other kind of things. But essentially, because of these kind of constant interruptions that he has um, over these past years, he is essentially, in many ways, um, for right now, he's like my apprentice. And so what I mean by that is um, Trey definitely is very from a from like the head knowledge and from the shift in no like this is a lifestyle that makes sense and this is what I want for our family. We are on the same page about everything. But from the actual next phase of like execution and knowledge and skill set, there is a bit of a difference because he does not have the same type of, you know, time that I do and, you know, consistency that I have to be able to kind of um, delve into um, gardening as much as, uh, as much as I can. And so, whereas I am definitely like the, the active gardener in terms of determining what we want to plant and grow and all those kind of things, he is aware and can tell you kind of like the process that I am doing, but I'm the one who's, you know, out there kind of doing the gardening with his assistance, right? Like he can name all of the herbs. He couldn't do this, you know, five years ago before I started growing. Honestly, neither really could I. Um, he definitely helps in terms of like setting up and cleaning and whatever I need, he is there and he's around. Um, with canning, again, like if I need him to help me process anything in terms of like getting the food ready he's gonna help out y'all for sure but the actual act of canning is what i'm doing and you know what i kind of i i like that right like i like that what we're growing it's like 100 percent my decisions <laughs> it's fun right or like building the pantry and i don't have you know uh, really like resistance to any of that. Trey is down to try any of the foods that I am making. He loves going to the farmer's market, you know, with me, he'll share kind of different ideas like, Hey babe, have you heard of this? Or I was listening to so-and-so and those kind of things. Um, he really wants to get into woodworking a lot. I mean, but that's not something that right now with his work schedule that he's able to do. Um, and he also loves target practice a lot, which is why I was thinking earlier, like you would really enjoy hunting too, babe, you know, that kind of thing. And so, okay, I kind of got off on a tangent there. Maybe that was sort of like the Q and A. I think that was a question that I didn't get to and I kind of slid it in right now. Okay, so now I'm looking down at my notes for my goals for this year. Um, and the goal that I have here first is I really want to take you all on. And now I just feel like every fall, <laughs> I start getting really busy for these past couple of years, but I'm not going to give up on this goal. Um, this past year it was the HOA conference and then 
uh, figuring out uh, my new position. But so I really want to take you all, I really want to leverage year round gardening. And so this is something that I can confidently say, like I already have my starts downstairs in the basement. And what I have focused on these past three years, because it's just honestly been where I have been in my mindset as a gardener is expanding my garden. And so I've done that. You've seen me kind of grow more and more progressively these past uh, couple of years. But now that my garden is pretty much, it's at capacity. Although, oh, did you hear that green stock was coming out with a new basket weave pattern? Oh, oh my gosh. I, I don't have room. I don't have room for it. I do not, unless I, I, I don't. Okay, no. Anyways, okay, squirrel. But one of the things that I want to be more intentional about kind of shifting my sharing with now is the processes that I use to garden, at least like to get my spring garden up and running and then my summer garden up and running. And really I was sharing on Instagram, my fall garden. I had Brussels sprouts that were growing. Right now there's about, I think like, three inches of um, uh, snow uh, out here, but I still have things that are growing, you know, in my grain stalks. I sneak pictures of the of my garden through pantry chats, but um, so I wanna show you this year, I wanna take you kind of behind the scenes on my thought process of, um, again, I always do a seed haul, so I'm gonna share that with you, what I'm growing, how I plant and determine what I wanna plant in each of my green stalks, how I succession plan, um, how I set up uh, a seed, my seed starting stations in a small space. And so those will be videos that I've already started uh, to document. I wanna show you exactly what my seed storage and tools kind of looks like, especially again, if you're a small space or beginner gardener. So um, stay tuned for more of that for this year. And then I also really want to talk more about um, soil health and worm farming. You don't need to rely on store-bought fertilizers to provide nutrients for your garden. And in fact, you shouldn't. A, they are expensive, and B, they only take away from the biodiversity of your soil. Instead of checking for nutrients, our jobs as gardeners is to steward the biodiversity. And that in turn takes care of everything else. It's called the soil food web, and I am so appreciative that that's how I built my understanding of gardening. And that in and of itself will ensure that your plants are protected against disease and harmful pests, and that you can grow your biggest fruits and vegetables. As my garden has expanded with each green stalk, what I do year after year hasn't changed since those early days of me sharing here on YouTube. I have only actually expanded my worm farms. And really when I am feeding my garden all of my homemade fertilizers, what I'm actually doing is feeding the bacteria and the microorganisms that are already present in my soil. And so I really want to share how you can adopt regenerative agricultural practices even in a small space i feel it is going to be such an empowering feeling because i will be able to take the most nutrient rich fertilizers that is vastly superior to anything i would even want or think about buying from a garden center because i have been cultivating pounds of black gold season after season and i my garden isn't reliant on external you know inputs and so i really want to share more about the processes that support um a, a healthy garden this year um another thing that um i really want to lean into a little bit more this year especially because i was so touched that um so many people found the pantry chats helpful because one of the things that has absolutely been true, even though one day I see us being able to, you know, produce um, much more of the majority of what we uh, consume, our way of getting to the homestead um, is really through, um, you know, stewarding the resources that we have and um, being very frugal with some of our uh, choices. And definitely there is such I, I I love all things, um, just food and preparation, or preparation and preservation and all of those things. And so 
the kind of aspect that I want to add that will be a little bit different in each pantry chat, and I kind of touched on this uh, in, Jan in January's pantry chat, is giving you even more precise kind of tools um, that, uh, you know, last year was more so, so on. Here's how I kind of like know what I'm going to be cooking with for that month. But even before that, there's different prep things that I'm doing that I've kind of touched on, but I, I really want to get more specific this year um, so that folks can also see how powerful that grocery game has been for us and being able to stick to that budget, which has freed up money to put into you know savings or to snowball into um, other accounts. Um, and so I wanna continue to share um, those kind of tips and tools um, with everyone. So definitely stay tuned for that. I will also, I will also do my best. I actually ran into um, some technical difficulties uh, last month, uh, but I want to do my best to make sure that the pantry chats are out that first weekend, that first weekend, y'all. During the work week, it's going to be tough. It's going to be tough, but I can definitely do this first uh, weekend. So I know that that is super important. I'm also thinking sometimes I already have like the grocery guides ready, but sometimes it's the actual like editing of the video. And so I realized, and y'all, it's just me kind of bouncing these ideas off like in my mind. I'm wondering like if you would be okay with me sending out the grocery guide and the recipes like first, cause I can send that out to you by the first of every month, but then maybe like the video will come out that weekend. I'm like, that, that's just what I should do. So um, stay tuned for that. Um, and then another thing that I've been so excited about, and I, I was able to kind of get this done right at the very end of the year is for, I'm looking at my, um, my apothecary. So for the past couple of years, as I have been, um, just self-taught studying, uh, different, uh, herbal books and growing them and cooking with them and making just some very kind of basic uh, recipes, I want to continue to build uh, my apothecary. So just in terms of tea blends and tinctures and salves, all of those different things, um, I want to continue to kind of share with you over uh, this next uh, gardening season because being able to have your own um, home medicine cabinet for, again, there are certainly things that I am so thankful that we do have modern medicine, but there are also a number of just, um, it's called folk medicine, but I know it to be not only from my dad sharing, you know, different remedies that grandma and big mama used with him, um, that, that they work, you know, and that how powerful is that, right? To be able to um, be able to tend to your own family, not only through food, but also through medicine. And so, uh, and just as a part of like an overall kind of um, health uh, regimen routine. So I'll be sharing um, more of that with you as well. I will also be sharing about becoming a backyard quail keeper. And my, this one truly has been four years in the making. And so Crystal's operation is much larger than anything that I um, will ever have uh, here while I'm in a townhouse. I mean, she has an excess of over 300 birds, but I have been um, putting together, as you saw in uh, last month's pantry chat, I have my quail cages and waters and an external sink, and I'll be building a brooder in the next couple of weeks and getting my own um, incubator because I do want to have the ability to do that. All of the uh, operations, I want to make sure that I'm able to do that here on my little homestead. And so I'll be taking you through that journey. I think I will probably start with quail sometime around um, having that process when I think my eggs will be hatching around my spring break. I think that's what I want to do just so I'm here um, for all of that. Um, but yeah, I will be taking you on that journey. That's so exciting for me because I will be able to, in a townhouse, be able to produce my own eggs and meat. And I mean, that's wild. That's so wild to me. I, quail are just, I am so appreciative. I learned about quail through a comment here on the channel. I hadn't even realized that they really were like, they were a thing. And to now see that this is, I mean, just, oh, 
That feels so awesome to be able to wake up because we can't have chickens here in our HOA and many of you all, you know, can't either. But to be able to know that there is, in most cases, this little loophole, um, that's, <laughs> that's gonna be awesome to share with you. Hunting was also something that was not on my radar at all this year. But, you know, I, I did tell you this time last year that I had signed up where I got on the email list. And many states have this, y'all. So please get on your state's list. You never know when they're going to have openings. And a lot of these teams, I mean, they're, they're very lean. But now that this opportunity has fallen to my lap, and actually I go for my hunter certification class, I think it's February 3rd. It's like that first weekend um, next month in February. And so now that that is something that has been a wonderful opportunity that I am so appreciative of, I still need to, you know, get my gun. I'm no, in no rush uh, for that, uh, for my shotgun. There are a couple of gun shows actually that will be coming up here in the next couple of months. So I'll definitely be going to those um, and taking you along, of course. Uh, and doing plenty of like target practice here over um, the summer. Um, but just being able to leverage my, you know, just time out in the field, like that's what I need. I need as many reps as possible. And so for this upcoming, um, I don't know if I'm going to be, if, if I'm going to do turkey season, I'm going to have to connect with my mentor to see if that's something that um, she wants to do. Oh my goodness, turkey hunting. Oh. <laughs> Oh my gosh, that, and wild turkeys are different from uh, domestic ones uh, entirely. So um, it, it is an experience for sure that I wanna have. But um, I know that that will definitely be a skill set that I want to grow in. Um, and, you know, hopefully this upcoming season, I will be harvesting, you know, my own um, several does. And so I'll be taking you along as I develop those skills as well. Oh, you coming over, Booba? Okay. So this is another pinch me moment, but <laughs> um, I got invited to back to speak at HOA this year. So yeah, <laughs> I was going to go to HOA regardless, y'all. I just, I love that conference. It is... <sighs> It's just so hard to describe. I, the, 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 qual the, the quality of like just folks and people that are there and the feel and the vendors and it's just, I, I just, I love that time of year. It is the highlight of my year because as I, as I shared, there are just so many people that either it's like, oh my goodness, I have read your book or I follow your channel, or hold on, I didn't even know about this. Like, thank you for sharing this. It just, it's really, really awesome. And there is always, I mean, it's been excellent to, or I mean, I, I have met um, friends here, like online that I've, you know, messaged like at the HOA conference. And so like, that's the awesome part about going. And plus it's also, it's not far from uh, for me at all, you know, to get there. I'm here in Maryland, it's in Virginia. And so, yeah, I will be at HOA again this year. Um, I'm not sure exactly right now uh, what I'll be kind of speaking on, but let me tell you, the HOA conference last year, even though I was so nervous to, um, to speak like I, I was because as I said, I felt kind of like a fish out of my a fish out of water in terms of this wasn't a professional presentation that I would be giving at work. This really was like the essence of me. And I still feel like um, I'm a little weird, you know, <laughs> like and, and in a way that like I fully embrace it is me like, you know what I mean? Uh, but I just felt so seen and heard and like you all are my friends you find your friends there right because as i was mentioning earlier in the day-to-day -day, like you don't come across that many people but i remember the best part of hoa after i had given um my uh my first uh, presentation on day one and then i went back to the tent and i felt so overwhelmed in such an amazing way of people that i was having conversations with and like as I mentioned earlier, I blabbed my ear off, or blabbed your ear off likely, and I was hugging everybody, and I just, I 
loved that so much. And I was in conversations nonstop from after my presentations are in the morning and I love just speaking to everybody. And so did my family. Oh my goodness, you all were just so incredibly like kind to my mom and my dad and my husband. And they were just, <laughs> we had the best time. And so we are so excited to come back. So excited to come back. I mean, there were plenty of times where I was just walking around. I was like, mom, where's dad? And like people in the line would be like, oh, we saw your dad back there. He's talking to that person or, I mean, the HOA conference is just, it is such a special time for sure. So if you can make it to that, I will see you there. Another thing that I think we're gonna do here pretty soon is, uh, <laughs> is something that um, I'm like, okay, I think we're gonna go ahead and do this is, is freeze drying. And let me tell you this, you probably have been hearing like a little bit of the tension in my voice around this because I have shared um, previously that it is something that I have wanted to look into since I initially started uh, learning how to can. I, I learned about, I really kind of started diving into canning, but then have also seen, you know, uh, freeze dryers. It's just, they're like YouTube videos, you know, that I was watching. Um, and I was like, oh man, that would be awesome too. However, however, I mean, with a price tag of, you know, $3,000, that's not, that wasn't something that was going to be an easy sell, A, for me, you know, first off, and then B, to my husband. And so, what I did initially, um, you know, as I was canning is actually, no, it's, it's been longer than that. It's been probably closer to like maybe six or seven years. But what I told myself was this, I said, you know, self in order to make, and I kind of do this with any kind of purchase, um, but particularly one that is, um, I mean, definitely that's not, that's not cheap. So I said to myself, I said, Cass, you will know if you're ready or if it is something that you should even consider doing after you have kind of built your way through what I'm just gonna call like the hierarchy of food preservation, right? So I needed to know that season after season, not just, you know, some fat or whatever else, like are you regularly getting use of, out of your dehydrator? Are you regularly canning and rotating those foods and, and you know, eating those? Are you regularly cooking from scratch? Does it align with how you know you're still shopping all of these years later? And what I can confidently say now is absolutely, right? And so after I kind of realized that, hey, I, this freeze dryer would make you know, sense just in terms of being able to, I've shared this before, I think that canning is my favorite way to preserve, for sure. It is, it is, I just, I enjoy it. But it's not, I don't, canning isn't like the one way that I wanna preserve all of my food because there are, for example, I don't like um, canned ground beef, you know? I just actually, I canned a couple of jars of that again. It's been within this past year. Um, then I need to try again. I used a different method that some of y'all were telling me about. But I still prefer to just dehydrate my ground beef and use it that way, right? So you gotta know, I now know, oh, I like this fermented and dehydrated but not canned. Or I like this, you know, kind of playing around with all those different things. And so I'm so glad that I have the arsenal of food preservation methods uh, at my disposal. And so one of the things that we started to do three years ago is um, my husband and I pretty much we follow the Dave Ramsey uh, approach to finances. So we have many different sinking funds, right? Where like the check comes in and it automatically just gets distributed to all of these different um, uh, kinds of uh, accounts. And so we started one like, for my freeze dryer, $25 a month. And so between that and then my parents, mainly my dad, because he loves dehydrating his... Uh, um, he loves making um, jerky, chicken, turkey, beef, like whatever it is. Every time he's up here, I already have his marinade basket ready, all that kind of stuff. And so um, that is something that now we're gonna go ahead and make because I can't see us, I want to be able to have my kind of full purview of preservation methods together. And that's a purchase now 
that as I think about, okay, what I am calling our kind of homestead operations here, there's still a couple other things that we definitely know that we need to have. Um, so there are a couple of things just in terms of like generators that we still wanna get while we're here that we can, you know, take to our next place. And so we're kind of pacing out, okay, what do we see ourselves wanting to have as we move to our actual homestead? And then, you know, what we can do right now. And so a freeze dryer is one of them. Um, we're looking at either the small or the medium one. Um, and so, yeah, I, um, it was interesting because when I was at HOA, there were a couple of people that were asking me, you know, well, why don't you freeze dry? And I was like, hey, like I want to, but they're like, no, you're gonna enjoy it. However, you know, I'm getting the same things, you know, y'all are, but I think that it will be worth my, I'm skewed more towards it being, it being something that is um, helpful because there definitely are times where um, I think, oh man, I could take advantage of XYZ sale, especially now y'all, since I am hunting and have like other hunting friends. I mean, if something happens and just time wise or space wise, right, it makes, it would make sense for us to do that now. And I can't, we've got to get, I feel comfortable with us getting our freeze dryer before we actually move to our homestead, because then, you know, there's going to be other, um, tools uh at that time that we need to kind of prioritize and so what i'm saying is i think we're gonna go ahead and do it they do have layaway plans but um that you can use for harvest right but we have been steadily my husband and i like to do like hey if they can offer it like we're gonna do our own layaway plans here to like pay that off um as we get it so i think we're there i think we're there let me know <laughs> Um, and I'll kind of share the results, but there are plenty of things where I'm like, man, that would be so awesome. Like just to have, y'all see how I shop. There are so many times I'm like, man, if I had a freeze dryer, I could really take advantage of this sale. <laughs> so, um, or even just like for my parents and different things like that. I'm like, oh, this would be awesome. My production would just be like that much better. So that, that could be happening this year. So the other crazy thing that happened this year was this, and I'm just covering up my address, but um, on YouTube, it's uh, there's a mile marker that they will send you a plaque of when your channel reaches 100,000 uh, subscribers. And shortly after, I wanna say maybe January, February of last year, it was a video that I had done the previous year. Um, it really started to take off <laughs> in a way that was kind of crazy. Um, and then after that, I, I really don't know because I kept following my normal like routine of what I kind of share here. It's not that I post it anymore or any of that. But I, yeah, it is, it, there are so many uh, new faces. And so um, I went from, uh, there were like 100,000, uh, I reached that landmark. And then before the end of the year, um, I had doubled uh, that, which is, I don't even know how to put that into words, y'all. <laughs> I don't know. The thing is, is, and I've, you know, shared very transparently about um, that before, um, I am very, I, I enjoy coming um, to YouTube in this channel because I just, I just wanna share how I'm trying to become a farm girl and I wanna meet others that are on their journey of becoming a farm girl too. And so that has always been the win and I've been very satisfied with that since uh, the very beginning. And also I am like an elder millennial and so <laughs> I very much, know what life was like before the internet and so I like what makes sense what I can register in my mind and comprehend are the comments and the conversations that I have with you here on the channel um, that is a meaningful kind of a uh, number to me to see 
the faces and the names that have been here since very early on or maybe when you start kind of sharing and I'm like oh, is so-and-so still gonna uh, comment on this uh, video they normally do oh good okay they did like that is meaningful to me there are other the other numbers and I know those are real people but there's this phrase that I came across and it talked about it kind of being vanity uh, metrics when I get a comment that's like hey this really helped me out like that is certainly um, the win and um, as I've shared uh, my um, whatever I'm doing here on YouTube it's not really following um, what traditional channels that are even very much much smaller in terms of like the number um, are doing right like I would need to be like posting more offering this that I don't as I said I don't have really like too much to like even offer you all in terms of like products I don't I have a um a canning journal that I talk about for a couple of dollars and then really that's it the the other thing sometimes I'm just like do I really need to like link this stuff I, I thrifted it I'm telling them that I thrifted it but some of you are like Yes, even if we can't thrift it, we still like the thing. So <laughs> here it is. Wow. Like, I feel like, um, oh, wow. So here's what the letter says. It says, do you remember your first subscriber? Yes, it was my husband. <laughs> your 100th or uh, your 100th or your 1,000th subscriber. Chances are you do. Yeah, like you, you actually do. So there's this letter here that they're sending me. And I think what this, um, what this means to me um, is, ta-da! Um, that's cool. But what really is um, more meaningful is that even if you um, haven't commented or maybe you have and now I'm unable to or I haven't been able to um, res respond to your comment, please know that you matter so much to me because I am not any different likely than you. And what sharing on YouTube has enabled me to do and to just, just to feel, which is incredible, is as I shared, I, I, I wanted to have a space that I could just archive in some particular way for the people that it was meant for, that hey, outside of what I do professionally, this is also kind of where I'm spending my time and what really matters to me. And unless you get it, you may not see me from day to day or wonder kind of like what I'm up to or why I'm not here or pursuing that. But this is what I'm kind of giving my life's kind of energy to. And I appreciate being able to link arms with so many other uh, of you that are also farm girls um, or becoming farm girls and that is the most meaningful part um, and I didn't want you all to think that I was not grateful since I have not kind of mentioned that um, but I I very much am grateful and um, as I said kind of it really connects to earlier in the video that it's kind of like also that Charles uh, Dickens quote, it was the best of times, it was the worst of times. <laughs> you can be going through some very hard things while also having some very exciting things happening too. And uh, I just, I just wanna honestly share that. So thank you, uh, friend, for being here. Regardless of when you arrived, that front door is always open and I appreciate the time that we share together. All right, friends, so with that, I would say we have another packed year ahead of us, and really, who knows what's in store? And also, there have been so many times where I wish that I could just reach out and give you a hug, so this might be a little awkward, but come here. Mm. <laughs> 
Until next time, I'll see you in my kitchen or garden soon. Take care, friends.